In this video, I'm going to teach you how to read a peer-reviewed paper. So for many of us, we spend a lot of time reading these papers. And if you don't have a good strategy going into it, it can take you forever to read. So what I'm going to do is give you the shortcuts. And before I can get to the shortcuts, really have to know what these papers are all about and what it is that they're trying to convey. So basically, for a research study, you need to have two things. First is you need to have a study that no one's really done before. And then the second one is that you need to have some kind of finding that furthers the field in some kind of way. So if you're able to figure out why they did the study, what the rationale for the study is, how this furthers the field, and figure out how they did it, really that's all you need to, to know how to do. And you can find this throughout the paper. There are several places that will tell you this right away. So the abstract is basically, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in as few words as possible. If you understand the abstract completely, you're pretty much there. You pretty much have everything that you need to know. In the introduction, that's the first section I want to get to after the abstract. Basically, you, your entire point is to convince the reader that this study is worth doing. So in the introduction, you'll see a brief outline of the things that are important in this article, and you'll see the rationale for why they're doing it. Typically, the first paragraph of the introduction and the last paragraph of the introduction are those that I suggest that you read. So if you read the abstract, the first, sec the first paragraph of the introduction, the last paragraph of the introduction, you can skip all the way down. The method section, you, you should have some idea of what the methods were from the abstract. The discussion, you should spend a little bit of time there. Um, the results, you'll be able to pick up from the discussion. In the in the discussion, take a look at the first paragraph and perhaps the last paragraph. And really, that's all you need to succeed here. So let's take a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's use this method to quickly go through an actual article. So this one, amygdala responses to emotionally valent stimuli and younger and older adults. Okay, so how does the amygdala act? So as they age, adults experience less negative emotion and come to pay less attention to negative than positive emotional stimuli and become less likely to remember negative than positive information. Okay, these th this profile of findings suggests that with age, the amygdala may show decreased reactivity to negative information, maintaining or increasing its reactivity to positive information. Okay, that makes sense because amygdala is involved with negative information and remembering positive information better. We use event-related functional magnetic resonance imaging, okay, fMRI, to as assess whether amygdala activation in response to positive and negative pictures changes with age. So we don't know what the differences are. So the key piece is we don't know what happens in the amygdala with age. So doing a study and seeing if there's different activation between younger and older adults. So that set, we kind of have the rationale for it and no one's ever done it before. And, you know, the amygdala is an important part of the brain. So we have rationale already. Both older and younger adults showed greater activation in the amygdala for emotional than for neutral pictures. That's a, That makes sense because it's an emotional part of the brain. However, for older adults, seeing positive pictures led to greater amygdala activation than seeing negative pictures, whereas this was not the case for younger adults. So the amygdala is firing more for positive pictures for older adults. So maybe that's why older adults experience less negative emotion, come to pay less attention to negative than positive emotional stimuli. Maybe that's where they're going with this. So took care of <clears throat> the abstract. And let's see. So older adults experience less negative affect than younger adults and different types of studies. Affective experience is seen in age stands in sharp contrast. So physically and cognitively it looks like older adults decline, but the emotional experience is improved. Okay, I mean, that's enough to to go down. They, they did the study they were talking about. They used the functional magnetic resonance imaging, the fMRI. And let's go down to the discussion. The present findings indicate that older adults diminish their encoding of negative emotional experience during the first moments of that experience. This was evident in the reduced arousal ratings and the reduced amygdala response for negative pictures that occurred during encoding. So it looks like when processing information, older adults selectively choose not to process and pay attention to negative information. For younger adults, that wasn't the case. And this suggests that older adults 
Online reductions in response to negative pictures should lead to disproportionately diminished later memory of negative information. So yeah, they're not processing the negative information as well, so they won't remember it as well. Two studies found that older adults showed less amygdala activation than younger adults. So part of the brain that's involved in fear isn't going off as much. And the, the present study suggests that these age differences do not reflect an overall decline in functioning of the amygdala, but instead reflect a shift in the emotional stimuli that's most responsive. So basically what's saying is the amygdala still works in older adults, but it's focused less on negative information. And maybe that's why older adults claim to be doing better emotionally than younger adults. So yeah, that's it. I mean, it makes sense, uh, short and succinct. We want to know why older adults report having better like emotional wellness than younger adults. And it looks like the amygdala, which is involved in picking out emotional pieces of our daily life is uh, implicated in this. And it shows that for older adults, it doesn't work as hard on the negative information as it does for younger adults. So that's at least some evidence to suggest that changes in the amygdala leads to a different experience of affect, in other words, for emotion for older adults. So yeah, that was a, a big study, a technical study, and got through it in about four minutes. So I hope this was helpful. And thanks for watching and have a great day.